What's up my friends, David Moss Jr. here, and in this video, I'm gonna do an update of my infrared DIY sauna. That's right, this sauna behind me that's sitting here in my garage gym gets over 200 degrees using a very small and very inexpensive DIY method that I figured out how to do and a lot of other people have followed along. So in this video, I'm gonna go over everything, how it's been working, what I would have done differently, and exactly how to do it if you wanna do it yourself. And yes, to make things easy, if you wanna follow along, I'll have links to everything I use, including the sauna down in the description below, and I purchased everything you'll see in this video on Amazon so we can make it really, really simple. All right, let's jump right in. So the first thing I wanna talk about is how much space does this sauna actually take up? Cause they seem to be pretty big. This one's not. This is a two person sauna and from the very back to the very front, all you need is four feet. Cool thing is, as far as width goes, all you need is four feet. And as far as height goes, all you need is six feet and three inches. Six foot three inches tall, so this thing would fit inside most rooms, inside most garages, it can fit inside anywhere, and it plugs right into your standard outlet, which makes it super convenient as well. So as far as footprint goes, these infrared saunas, it's a two person, six panel, low EMF infrared sauna. I recommend it, I think it's great. As far as the heat goes, the reason I did this DIY is because infrared saunas just don't get that hot. Most of them max out around 140, some of them get up to 150 degrees, and the whole theory behind it is infrared heats you up from the inside so you don't have to be in those extreme hot conditions for you to get some benefits. There's a lot of benefits to infrared saunas. However, when you've done them as long as I have or if you've done them for any period of time at all, you get conditioned to it really fast. The heat isn't hot enough and you'll have to spend a lot of time inside that sauna in order to start to sweat and to really experience those benefits. So if you're like me and you want your infrared sauna to be hotter or you want an infrared sauna, that can get hotter, this video is for you. First, let me give you a quick tour. So I did not do anything on this DIY to eliminate the ability to just straight up use it as an infrared sauna. All of these panels still connect, all of these panels still work as an infrared sauna, which is great, but here are a few things that I did to change my infrared sauna. One of the first things you'll notice is I added these salt blocks to the floor. It's just Himalayan salt blocks, also purchased these on Amazon. They're really nice as far as they just kind of stay cleaner than the regular floor. And I just feel better about stepping on and off the salt and sweating on salt than just on the regular floor. So that's pretty cool. A lot of people tend to like that. I added this little cushion, kind of the same thing. It's just a little more comfortable when you're spending a lot of time in here. I added a regular thermometer, sauna thermometer, so I can be able to tell what the temperature is. And then I added this. This is the main thing I added. This is a patio heater that I added to the sauna and that's what this whole DIY is gonna be about. So let's get to that. Now how the sauna would typically work, you have this panel on the outside, you also have this panel on the inside. You literally just turn it on and it's going to set your temperature. Mine reads in Celsius, so it'll tell me the Celsius currently. And it also has a timer. There's also these lights. You can actually turn these lights on and off, whether you want these lights on or off. You can also hold this button down and press the arrow up button, it'll turn the outside lights off and you can press the down arrow and that will turn the lights on the inside off. It'll also change the color. So you can go through a bunch of different colors depending on what you want and know the red is not red light therapy, just it has that chromiotherapy kind of therapeutic setting, which is cool. Um, there's a lot of information out there on that, which is also very, very cool. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and turn these lights on so that we can jump in here and I can show you exactly what I did. How I was able to get this thing installed was really, really simple. It's like the easiest install ever. And actually, once I finished this DIY, I was like, is this really gonna work this easily? First things first, you're gonna wanna absolutely get a GFCI extension cord to plug this into. And yes, you might trip your power because you're asking for 1500 watts. So I would highly recommend if you do not have enough power or a dedicated circuit to have an electrician come out and make sure that you have enough amperage so that you're not tripping your breaker because that's very, very frustrating. Anytime you're using a lot of electricity, it's a possibility. So make sure that you use a GFCI outlet, make sure you check with an electrician to make sure you have enough power. Now, as far as the install goes, it was very easy. All I had to do was install one bracket and I just drilled it right into my sauna, right above the door. And then you literally just take the patio heater and you just bolt it right to it, very, very simply. It plugs right into a regular outlet. So I just fished it through the roof, which was also very easy. There's a stereo up top that I never use. So I just popped that out, just like an old school car stereo. I popped that out and I just fished the wire right through. I plugged it into the GFCI outside of the roof and everything worked very, very simply. The whole thing works through a remote and that's how you turn it on, turn it off and adjust the temperature. And here's a quick tutorial of how the patio heater will actually work. So you have this little remote, tells you power, you're gonna click it, you'll see that green light turn on. 
and then you can go to 500 watts, which you'll feel the heat immediately. Go to 1000, and then you can go up to 1500. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off just for the video, because I don't need it to get hot in here. But that's how it works. You don't wanna touch it, because it will definitely get hot. The only thing to take note of is when you're getting in and out of the sauna, you definitely have to remember there's a hot object above you, so just kind of duck your head and make sure you don't hit your head on it because it's hot and you don't want to touch hot things. So this is a patio boss patio heater and they have changed the way it looks. However, the functions are all still the exact same and I still do recommend the patio boss here because this thing works really, really well. There's three settings, 500 watts, 1000 watts and 1500 watts. What I found is the 500 watt feature, if you have that clicked on, it gets to about 150, 160 degrees radiating heat onto you. The 1000 watt feature will get you to about that 180 and then the 1500 watt feature, that's where it can crank up to 200 plus degrees. I keep that on with the infrared option as well. So I have traditional and infrared on at the same time when I have that 1500 watts on and that's when it really gets really, really hot. Here's a question that I get a lot and it's kind of hard to explain it. So I'm gonna just show you. Up here in the ceiling is a little dangling metal tip and what that is is that's the temperature sensor. And if this infrared sauna gets to a temperature above, I think it's 65 degrees Celsius, I think that's where it trips, is where it'll start beeping at you and it'll turn off the infrared feature, which can be a problem if you're trying to do both. If you're just using this with the radiating heat, then you don't really have to worry about that. However, if you're gonna wanna use both like me, then you're gonna wanna do this little tip and do this with your own discretion. This is not me recommending you to do this at all. This is me just letting you know what I have done. This is my experience and this is what I have been doing. I'm not recommending any of you do this whatsoever, okay? But if you do wanna follow along, this is all I did. What I did is up here, where it says temperature sensor, there's three screws. I unscrewed all of those and then I took this off. All I did was I pushed the sensor up into the ceiling. So the sensor is still up there. I leave the vents wide open. So the sensor is actually right here. So it can feel the heat, it's just not directly touching the heat. And then I took a piece of cardboard, probably not the smartest thing, but you know, it is what it is and it's working. Piece of cardboard, I put it there just to keep that heat from touching the wire. And then I just screwed it back in with one screw. So basically the sensor is over here inside the roof. I just pushed it through the hole, moved it off to the side and screwed this thing back on. I found that when I did not have that piece of cardboard for some reason, because this is metal and there is some of the wire in there, that it was still tripping. So that's why I put that piece of cardboard there. I'm sure there's other options, but this is what I've done and this is what's been working for me. And hey, if you notice this little stack of orange cans behind me, these are saps. And I would encourage you to check out saps. This is an electrolyte drink. This is something me, my wife, my kids, and my friends all drink every time we get in and out of the sauna. And I'll post a link. You can get these on Amazon, which is also super, super cool. I don't have a discount code. I just like to represent brands that I really, really use and really like. So check out Saps after this video. Link will be down below. Now let's get in the sauna. So a question that I have been receiving from people is how is the actual sauna itself holding up? Because they're not really made for that heavy of a temperature. Well, it's been working really, really good. And to be honest, there's a lot of times where me and my wife will turn this thing on and we'll crank it up to the hottest setting and we'll totally forget that we have the sauna on and it'll stay on for a while. I do believe that's one upgrade to the patio heater is it does have an auto off feature at about an hour. So check that out. There's a lot of other options out there, but if you do decide to go with this patio boss, I was just reading up on it. They changed the look of it a little bit. They've upgraded it, which is cool. Still the same power setting, still uses a remote, which is awesome. But I do believe there's an auto off feature. The only thing that has happened inside here with the heat being as hot as it is, is up here the warning label has just started to just crinkle up and maybe melt a little bit, but it's still fine. Everything else has been totally fine. These little speaker covers, which I'll never use, have been fine. The light's been totally fine. But once again, I leave this vent wide open so that the heat can escape from the sauna, which is great. But everything else, I mean, the little caution label and everything like that has totally been fine. The panels have been fine. So we've had no issues other than just a little bit of the crinkle. But this has stayed totally working, which is absolutely great too. So I've experimented with a lot of different things with this, but using this patio heater has definitely been something that I would say has worked and there's been no issues. A few of the trial and error things that I did not start with, I did not start with a GFCI, so I definitely recommend that. I did not make sure I had enough power, so definitely recommend that. And that was pretty much it. Everything else has been working great. It doesn't take up a big footprint in my garage. It's nice to have the sauna in the garage away from the elements. So 
if it's cold outside, if it's hot outside, if it's raining outside, me and my wife and my family can still enjoy the benefits of a sauna. So if you're looking for an indoor infrared sauna or you're just looking for a sauna that takes up a smaller footprint but can still reach those heavy, heavy and high temperatures, I would recommend you take a look at how I built this. Once again, I'm gonna post all the links down in the description below so you can make sure to check those out. It'll make it a little bit easier for you. I even have a kit, a DIY sauna kit. It's very simple to do. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. You can ask me on Instagram as well if you wanna just privately message me. My Instagram handle is at DMossJr. I answer a lot of questions from people around the world, so I have no problem answering yours. If you have a question, feel free to ask. I appreciate you guys for watching. If you have any questions, once again, post them in the comments below. I'll see you guys on the next video. But before you go, I wanna recommend that if you want a little bit more of a tutorial of exactly how I did this, I'm gonna post that right here so you can check that out. That's gonna be a little bit more helpful because it's step-by-step -step exactly how I've done this. Other than that, I appreciate you guys. Have a great day. I'll see you on the next video, and God bless.